have made their decision, their scores will be tabulated by Barry Barton, CPA and Vice President of Texas' largest bank. All right, anyway, let's not delay any longer. Let's meet our contestants. some tough decisions ahead of them this evening, but one tough decision have already been made, and that is to narrow our field from 30 contestants down to 10 semifinalists. And right here in my hand, I have those names. So I'll let us uh, tell you what they are. Our finalist, semifinalist number one is Hot Chocolate.
Rock number nine, Roxanne Russell. that goes back thousands of years? Oh, <laughs> no, not that one. <laughs> I'm talking about the theater because female impersonation is as old as the world of drama itself. In the theater of virtually all cultures, from Roman drama to modern motion pictures, female impersonators have played a prominent role. One reason being that it is only in recent times that women were even allowed on stage. In Roman drama, all female roles were played by men, but the men wore only female masks and highly decorative clothing. With the daring dramatic innovations of William Shakespeare and Elizabethan theater, challenging female roles like Lady Macbeth and Juliet demanded more realism. But few actors were ever more realistic than Laurence Olivier seen here in a modern version of Taming of the Shrew. Incidentally, the term drag supposedly came from Shakespeare's abbreviation for drag, or dressed as girl. In Japan, female impersonation on stage has always placed heavy emphasis on stylism over realism. The Anagata, the female impersonators of the all-male kabuki, take up to three hours to don their white face masks, their many layers of heavy kimono, and wigs which sometimes weigh as much as 30 pounds. Some Anagata, like Tama Saburo, have their own female groupies, much like rock stars here in America. And a few have even been declared living national treasures by the Japanese government. By the 18th century, European women were allowed on stage and most female impersonators were relegated to comic and burlesque roles. But there were definite exceptions. Here in America, in the early 1900s, impersonators like Carol Norman and Bert Savoy were headlining on Broadway and in films. But the most popular of them all was Julian Eltinge, who earned $4,000 a week in his heyday. Nowadays in Europe, Cuccinelli and Bambi are the toasts of Paris, while Danny LaRue has been entertaining television audiences in Britain for years. And here in America, the art of the female impersonation has reached new heights with the huge successes of Torch Song Trilogy and La Caja Faux on Broadway, not to mention Tootsie. So we've seen that once again, female impersonation is respectable and popular, if not downright fashionable. But why not? As theater and art, drag has been with us from the beginning. It deserves to be with us now. Thank you, Rudy. Thank you very much. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Guess what? Now it's time for the evening gown competition. So without further ado, here's our first semifinalist, Hot Chocolate. Hot Chocolate is wearing a self chiffon dress by Jorge Passant. I'm a competitive person. I think competition is great for everyone. With this contest, it's one of the best contests out because all the top female impersonators of the country is entering this contest. change my character when I go on stage as opposed to off stage. Yes, I do. Um, probably the most important time is when the lights hit. Semifinalist number three, Michael Andrews. Michael's red dress was designed by Bob Mackey. Uh, yes, I have been a nice um, My 
started out as a kid with uh, choir music and half music and uh, family that built some fun. And uh, I used to race some type of question that uh, all of you have in your mind, and that is, Lyle, why are you wearing those dark glasses? Well, <laughs> because I don't see too well without them, and besides, I'm from Hollywood. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the real question is, who are our judges? And that's a good question. So let's go down to Ruth Buzzy and have her introduce them to us. Thank you, Lyle. Our first judge is Dr. Bill Hawes. He is the director of radio, television, and drama at the University of Houston, correct? A uh, film. A film. I'm sorry, film. And um, you also have a book out called? The Performer in Mass Media. And is this something I should get, Bill? Oh, um, no, I, I can't teach what you have. Right? Oh, well, how sweet. Thank you for being with us tonight. Next, we have Laura Shaw, who is reigning Mix Miss Texas USA. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Ruth. Thank you. Stand up so they can see you real good. You should 
be right at home here. <laughs> proud to, to introduce to you the world-famous makeup artist, George Masters. George, thank you for being here. Thank you. I want you to know I love makeup, and I know that makeup is half the secret of, that all of us have. Uh, probably 60%. That's right. I to maybe 70, right? Maybe 75. <laughs> thank you for being here. Our next judge is Gail Clark. She is a top fashion model. I think you should rise too, darling. Really, please. Lovely lady. <laughs> Gail has also directed many beauty pageants down here, so we're proud to have her here as a judge this evening. <laughs> Next, we have a new upcoming actor who has done many films. Uh, he right now is starring in a series called Lone Star Bar and Grill on Showtime, and I believe you have two feature films coming out, sir? Yes, Buckaroo Banzai and? for MGM and the Unknown Comic Movie. Well, you know what? You're so cute. I'd like to give you a kiss. Thank you, Ruth. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, George Masters is the makeup artist that worked on Dustin Hoffman in the movie Tootsie. That's the guy. Okay, right now it's time for a little something different. <laughs> this show isn't different enough already. Oh, you've seen the contestants in evening gowns. You'll see them later on in the talent segment of the show, so let's see them now in a little different light. Wearing clothes... Uh, with a more casual, contemporary look. Should be fun, so let's get right to it. So here to start things off is semifinalist number one, Hot Chocolate. <laughs> Hot Chocolate's burgundy suede outfit is by Candy Ellis. It's trimmed with black leather. Complimented by Silver Fox. Semifinalist number two, Rachel Wells. Rachel's suede studded jumpsuit is from Avante of Paris. is from Sarita of Rodeo Drive. And now we have Jennifer Fox. Jennifer's outfit is a Designer's Hall of Fame suit by Albert Nippon. A Lagerfeld overcoat and accessories by Charles Jordan. Worst. 
Sharp. This dress features padded shoulders and a prairie skirt. Black and white from Norma Kamali. Here we have Roxanne Russell. Black is beautiful. An owl neck sweater with matching pants, boots, and sash. And gold accessories to accent from Norma Kamali. Thank you, Lyle. As you can see, right now I'm backstage, and in the middle of all the rush, rush, and last minute preparation, I'm sure the last thing in the world they want to do is talk to me. But I'm here, the camera's here, so let's see what we can find out. <laughs> uh, girls, uh, for once, I'm going to steal someone else's line. Let's talk. <laughs> all right? How long does it take you to get made up, would you say? Oh, on the average of about two hours or so. Two hours or so? Anyone else longer than two hours? About two and a half. Two and a half. Yeah. Two hours is general. Two hours is just about the time. Do you, um, now, now, for instance, under there, do you shave your legs and everything? Do you go that whole route? Is it necessary? Oh, no. Sometimes we wear dance skins to cover up the hair and stuff on the legs, so it's just only necessary to wear a couple of pairs of hose for stage, you know. Anyone else anything different about that? Oh, no, I got my hair. Pardon? <laughs> I have my hair. You do your own hair. and everybody... On my legs. Oh, you have your hair on your legs. Is that, now, now, do you take care of your own wigs, or do you have someone come in and style, style your wigs? I do them all myself. You do do them all yourself. Do, do you do yours yourself? Sometimes. Boy, <laughs> these guys go through a lot of work for this show. I guess they're learning what I knew all along. It's not easy being a woman. <laughs> competition and the contemporary competition. Now, right now, it's time for the talent segment. And this is where we really separate the girls from the boys. <laughs> so here's the semifinalist number one, starting off as Tina Turner. Let's welcome Hot Chocolate. Now, Dennis 
think you might like to hear something from us? Nice and easy. But there's just one thing, you see. We never, ever do nothing nice and easy. We always do it nice and rough. We can take the beginning of the song and do it easy. Then we're going to do the finish. Rock. It's the way we do Proud Mary. Rolling on the river. This is the story now. Left a good job in the city. Working for the man every night and day. And I never lost one minute of sleep. And I was worried about the way that things might have been. Big wheels keep on turning. Keep on a proud Mary, keep on burning. And we're rolling, 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 yeah. Rolling on a river. Say we're rolling, 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 rolling on a river. Finalist number two, Rachel Wells. The one thing I have never regretted is independence. I began to yearn for it when I was a child. When I was eight years old, I lived with two cold gray aunts in a cold gray house. My mother died when I was two. My father. My father was a champagne salesman, and he was exactly like his product. Just as irresistible, and if you're poor, just as hard to find. I adored him, and I lived for his occasional visit. Six weeks before my first communion, he came for the afternoon. I pleaded with him to take me away with him. But Catherine, where would I take you? I live nowhere. I travel, but I'll not be away a year this time. I will be back in seven weeks for your communion. Six. Even better. And you'll not wear that hideous bedspread your aunt's made for you. I'm going to buy you a communion dress fit for a princess. Could it be red? <laughs> a red communion dress. Well, why not? Take me with you, Papa. Now, not next time, Catherine. After your communion. Then we'll both go away and be happy forever. Take me with you, Papa. 
just keep thinking about that bright red communion dress. Catherine, dream away a little, lay a little, pray a little, make the hours fly. Father, till we meet, Katie, sweet, goodbye. And I never saw him again. The one thing that I have learned about independence is that you have to live by all of your own rules. And I tell myself each and every day, who the devil cares what a woman wears? Is it worth a stitch ending up a witch in a golden shell? One is as one does. And by God, it was life was as it had to be. It was not too bad to be always mademoiselle. Right or wrong, I'm glad to be just myself. Let's hear it for Michael Andrews.